earned about the light painting assignment. Um, at this point, you should have a couple, two, at least, light painting images that you created uh, using either SLR, point and shoot, or your mobile phone, and you just capturing uh, light painting images. Hopefully, the background is pretty dark and black. It'll help it'll make your life easier doing some of the composition work. So we're gonna learn a lot of cool things here. I'm on bridge, I'm previewing it, and I can now rate my pictures. I'm just gonna pick this one for argument. Honestly, a lot of this assignment is Photoshop, to be honest. So I'm gonna grab that image, that image, um, and let's grab this image. So my, I five-starred these images. I'm gonna tell the computer on my folder of light painting, just give me my five, and a few options from Bridge onto Photoshop. Now you can open these files individually in Photoshop and bring them in. But if you know you're gonna put do a composition, um, you can just stack them in Photoshop using Bridge. So you can go to Tools and say, open up in Photoshop and just stack them all together and just do load files in Photoshop layers. That's one suggestion. Now, if the only reason why you wouldn't do this if you actually wanted to change the actual file size. So I'll show you both uh, ways. So Typically, I'm at a regulated, depending on the size of my file, in this case, I'm telling my, the computer to use a 2560 by 1440 size file, okay? So when I go here and I say stack, tools, Photoshop, load files in Photoshop layer. So they're essentially, it's just gonna put them all on top of each other in one file, okay? so. Okay, so there they are all loaded. Now, the other option is you creating a new document. And if you have a different idea, like you wanna make this um, like a photo paper. So let me say view, and I want this to be an eight by 10 minimum. You can click that. If you wanna go to print and you say, well, I wanna use a kind of tabloid and I wanted to go landscape, you can, okay? So let's just say I wanted to go tabloid uh, you can go other presets. There's other sizes out there, guys. And typically, you could even do your own stock one. So say, for example, if I wanted to go 36 inches by 24, like a big poster, all right? Maybe you want to print this out later. You can go that size as well, okay? But for this argument, I'm just going to go tabloid 11 by 17. I'm going to go landscape, but you can choose to go porch if you like. And I'll show you both methods. So here I am with a port a tabloid size. This is the original with a stacked based on the, the dimensions of the photograph. Okay. So here, um, well, technically, you can just go file open, open them up, and drag them in. Um, you could technically go to bridge, select them all, and click and drag. Hold on, hold down the Photoshop wait a second and then drop all these photographs into the Photoshop tab and press enter for each one. Enter and enter and essentially stacks them that way too. Notice the little icon. It is a smart object. It's not a rasterized layer. So you might need to rasterize them for some of these effects to, to do so. Uh, to do that, you can just right click, say rasterize layers and they're rasterized. Okay. So notice Right off the bat, I have my move tool, auto select, show transform controlled on. I'm gonna use the layer. And these pictures don't fit the 11 by 17 size, so I might have to increase the size. I'm gonna hold shift and alt, and it keeps the same center. So I might lose a bit of the photograph uh, in doing the size changing. So just keep that in mind. So this is, uh, if you have a set paper size in mind, that you might wanna use this method, okay? Going back to the other method, it's already stacked above each other and you can start playing with it. So I'm gonna deviate, I'm gonna get away from this side and go back to the original, but you can do it this way if you like. So I by law, out, and then there you go. So they're all sized larger uh, to fit the 11 by 17, okay? So let's go back to this one, the stacked version, a different bridge. They're all laid up over top of each other. Now, one thing you're gonna learn about is the modes, okay? So how modes work, these are stacked. I have an image over top of the image. So right now you can't see these because obviously this layer above 
is taking over. Okay. Now, what's fun about the assignment is you're going to learn about different modes. Now, as I move down, you can see how this image is now multiplying with the layers below it. And if you play with different st uh, styles, this is very subjective. Okay. You're going to play with how light is transferred from one image to another. So this is now going over top of this image and lightening through that one. Now check this out. If I click this layer and I apply the same one, lighten, I will now blend the other layer below it. Well, what's cool about this, I didn't have to do anything really in terms of masking or techniques. I'm just really blending. And if you have uh, the black, the black will be removed and the colors of the light will just blend with each other. Okay. Now, in terms of creativity, you can go nuts, right? Um, for example, I'm going to click on this layer. Now, I can make this bigger. I can rotate this. So if you're not familiar with the move tool, if you move your cursor to the bottom, so in this case, the top corner, just slightly above. So right now you're stretching it. But if you move your mouse slightly, it will get the rotate. You can click and drag and rotate this object and move it any angle you'd like. Now you hold shift, they'll do increments of 15 degrees, FYI, okay? So if this interests you and you wanna change the orientation of this light and put it maybe over here on this side, you can. Now, who's to say you can't duplicate? So here's a way to du duplicate. If you hold down the Alt Option button on your keyboard and click and drag, you can duplicate the same series of images, okay? Now, if you notice on the right-hand side, it did that for you. Now, I'm going to just go back a step and I'm going to right click and duplicate, which is essentially the same thing. Okay. I'm going to make a copy. Now, it just duplicated right over top of each other. Now, this would be kind of cool on the right hand side, but how do I flip it? Hmm. Well, this is where you have to go to edit, transform, and this is where you have to flip it, uh, in this case, horizontally. So now it's flipped the image and I can stick this on the right hand side. Okay. So there's nothing saying you can't duplicate the same light stroke and play with it that way. Okay. So right off the bat, this is looking cool. I got three different co color codes of uh, lights. And all I did was um, tell the computer that I just wanted to lighten it. And you can change the mode on each one. So say this one on the right hand side. I want to experiment. I didn't want light and see what it looks like if I do color dodge, linear, overlay. Okay, this is where the uh, the black background does get in the way. Color difference. Oh, that's pretty cool. Anyways, what it's doing here, it's uh, any color that goes through is now being distorted and diffused. And you can do that as well. Okay. Other skills that you might want to learn is applying different um, masks to it or different types of um, levels, brightness, contrast. So in this case, I'm going to play with, say, brightness and contrast on this layer. Now, you got to be careful with this. This brightness and contrast layer goes above, right? And it affects actually anything below this. If I just wanted to affect um, the one below, uh, what you should, should do, is, I suggest, is you create a group, okay? And in this group, I'm gonna put that uh, layer style and the image I want on there. I'm gonna bring it above. And then what we're gonna do is right click and say, uh, create a clipping mask. So it only affects this and this item, okay? And doesn't affect anything below it. So keep that in mind. Clipping masks are needed if you want to control things. So under this brightness and contrast layer, I'm only affecting this line right here. So just to prove this, I'm just going to eyeball everything else out just so you can see what's happening. And yeah. So under the brightness and contrast, I have this ability to increase the intensity and play with the contrast. Okay. So if I want to like decrease it, I can, okay. Now, what if I were to apply a different effect on here with this layer style? So I can click here and say, hey, let's go with hmm, color balance or 
hue and saturation, levels, curves. Um, there are tons of things you can do with this. So let's go to say hue and saturation. Okay. Notice because I already have it clip mask, it knows that I want to apply it to this. So playing with this, I can play with the color of that light and it only affects this object. So let's see this. This is true. All right. My other layers are not affected. Cool. So I was able to tell the computer that these layers are affecting this specific one and putting it in a group just helps organize it. So if you see a little drop down there, okay. Now it's fun. It's colorful because you're dealing with light and you can change color and who knows what else you can do. And I'm just going to stop talking right now because I want you to explore you putting clip masks on to different uh, layers of light. And, yeah, you know, I can spend all day here. Here, let me show you uh, levels if you really wanted to get the, the blacks black. So let me show you um, that same image. Playing with the levels on that, you can really make the background dark and kind of uh, get rid of blacks with just levels. And you can increase the, the quality of it. Now this is looking pretty neon. It looks pretty slick. And again, this drop down arrow tells me that it's linked into that object and not affecting the other ones. Okay. If I had this levels uh, above here, guys, see how it affects all of them. Okay. So be careful. It's a hierarchy based on what's on top. So I'm going to put this back into there and it's connected and it's only going to affect this layer in particular. So again, if you're going to apply these uh, different st styles, uh, adjustment layers, make a group, organize it. So group two and drag it in there. Add a layer style to it. Um, uh, okay, so that gradient map is now affecting all of them because I have not clipped it. So I'm going to right click and say clip mask and notice the arrow drops down and it does only affect that area. So keep that in mind, guys. Anyways, after you're done, save your composition. Say save. Almeida David underscore light comp. Save as a PSD file. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to go file, save as, and make a JPEG version. The JPEG version is actually what you actually submit, okay? But the JPEG version doesn't have all the layers. It is a kind of one-shot deal, okay? So in my Photoshop file, the PSD, I have all those layers, all my groups, okay? Actually, I don't like that gradient map, to be honest. I'm gonna take that out. Yeah, just delete that layer mask. I don't feel it. And here, let's get rid of that gradient map. And what I'm going to do is now just show you really quickly. If you guys don't know the difference between a PSD and a JPEG, here's my JPEG version. Notice when I open it up, I don't have any of those layers. Okay. So you're showing me your final composition without layers. The PSD is the one that has all the layers and all the styles that you will demonstrate afterwards to me. Okay. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you to be creative in Photoshop with your light painting. Good luck.